Hey guys, Aaron here. We're doing something a little bit different today from the normal stand-up paddle boards and boat building. I'm actually motoring my boat, which I've just bought. It's a 28 foot Daydream yacht. So 28 foot long, eight foot wide. And I'm motoring it from a place called Phoenix Marina in Brooklyn on the Hawkesbury River around to uh, my mooring in Bentsville. Yeah, if they great. don't, I mean, I'll, um, if they don't, we will, but I, I, I don't know. I think they're going to do it. Could be. That's all right, I don't mind. So, pretty excited. Uh, a little, bit, a little bit nervous as well because we've got to make sure that we we get through the rail bridge that's up there at pretty much bang on low tide so we're we're tracking well so far but i will uh, keep you posted but needless to say this is a glorious day the sun is out there's not much breeze we're just going to motor along if there's enough we might pull the head sail out the single cylinder 10 horsepower yamaha is doing its job and we're on the water. Woo! All right, the engine's been running for about 10 minutes now, so I've just put it into idle and wanted to see what the gauge is reading in terms of temps and everything. Just put it through diligence before we keep on going, so we'll go check that now. Well, there's no alarms going on, so I take that as a good thing. Far so good. Not that I'm doubting the boat. To be honest, the boat's in great condition. Same lady owner for 18 years, same shipwright for 18 years. And the shipwright used to own one of these types of boats and he loves it. Uh, the engine was put in only seven years ago and it's got a clean bum, it's got a clean prop, everything's done to it that needs to be done on the hull. Um, so, I mean, I'm actually really confident that. I've, I've got myself a good boat, that's for sure. So currently going with the tide until we've got about half an hour till low tide. So we're going to be hitting the bridge right on the money. And we're making 6.3 knots at the map, which is pretty awesome, really. It's a, a two-ton boat with a 10-horse engine and being, you know, not extremely narrow like an Adams, but still narrow for a boat this size, it certainly just slips through the water. So very happy so far. All right, we're coming up to the bridge. It's a moment of truth. Did we get all the calculations right for the tides? The bridge has an, uh, a height of 11.4 meters at mean high water tide. And the boat has an air draft of 12.4 meters. So we're going through only a half an hour before low tide. So what I might do is take some weight off the boat through nice and slow. I mean, it looks like there's plenty of room there. It looks like there's heaps of room, to be honest. But, you know, we're practicing good seamanship. We're going a bit slower. We've checked our tides. We've done our numbers. And we're going through at exactly the right time. You see the tide going around the pylons there pretty quick. So the tide's going with us. Here we go. Oh, yeah, heaps of room. There she goes. Woo, about a meter. Echo. Nice. Nice, we just did it. We went under the bridge. We're good to go. <laughs> oh, this is so awesome. That really feels good. It feels really good, I tell you. Oh, this is a great feeling. Man in his boat is nothing better. Well, and a good woman by his side, hey? Over there on the port side is Dengar Island where uh, a little community there and also Dengar Stu lives there from the Dengar Marine Channel. G'day Stu, 
He should do a drive-by. One day I'll do a drive-by and I'll go check out his boat. That'd be pretty cool. Next time, Stu. I'll see you, mate. Alright, so phase one was getting out of the marina, phase two was going under the rail bridge, phase three is heading down the Hawkesbury, and then the next thing I want to do is uh, I'm just going to stop the engine, I'll probably leave the engine going just for a bit of uh, peace of mind, but I noticed when we left that the, the anchor isn't in position, so I want to get that in position, I also want to get my uh, boat hook on deck ready to grab the mooring. So yeah, once again, just making sure we're prepared for anything, you know, you want to be able to have the anchor ready to go. If something go wrong, we're going to be able to drop that anchor. And the water here is plenty shallow, so it wouldn't need a lot of chain. But it's, uh, it's just good seamanship to be ready that, um, for anything, basically. Yeah, so that's what we're going to do now. All right, we've got the engine in idle, and we're just waiting for the boat to lose way. Still cruising along at about three, two and a half knots. There's the weight behind us. As soon as the bay is more or less stopped in the water. Go down below, the anchor is in the forepeak. We'll grab that and put that on the bow roller around there. Attach it to the chain, job's done. Long, I'll put a wire mousing on that just to make sure it's not going anywhere. And anchor over the bow roller, and then use this line to tie it up. All right, change that through the horse pipe shackle, anchor, bow roller. I've got a line. So the head of the anchor and a line on the shackle. So that's fine, that's not going anywhere. This is just a quick release lot knot that'll come undone nice and easy. And that to the Samson post. Little little mini Samson post. So I think I've made my first error in my navigation planning. Going under the first big rail bridge on the Hawkesbury is no drama, but there's two more bridges to go under to get to where I wanted to put it on the mooring. And that's uh, one is 11 and a half minutes, same as the rail bridge. And that would be okay, but the other one is nine and a half. And look, to be honest, it's pretty, probably just I missed the, missed the boat on, on checking that one, but uh, the boat's not gonna get in there. So I have a backup plan to put it on a mooring um, which I've contacted someone and said, yeah, we can chuck it there for a bit. So uh, that's the plan for now, is to put it there in the mooring. Um, so let's go do that. any wind I'd go for a sail but man there's nothing it's just calm but I'm not complaining don't get me wrong first time you go on a boat you want to get used to it and that's what I'm doing right now getting some confidence in it I mean I saw the boat out of the water this morning I saw it completely out of the water it had just been any foul the top sides have just been painted everything's been checked so it's structurally not a problem but you know the first time you take on the water you want to make sure that the first time you take on the water, you want to make sure that you're not giving yourself too much of a headache straight away. Certainly over time, you want to be able to test the boat and, and gain confidence in it in a range of different 
um, wind conditions and swell conditions and uh, environments, including nighttime. But for the first time around, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm thoroughly pleased that it's a nice, easy motor from the marina to the mooring. Because I'm sure there'll be many adventures and moments to come. <laughs> Is the Coral Sea Pacific Ocean, the mouth of the Pitwater and Broken Bay. And the island you can see just there is called Lion Island. Originally the plan was to take the boat in between Lion Island and the mainland in and around to Brisbane waters, but those bridges are not going to be navigable at this height, so I'm going to take a mooring over there where those boats are. That's the plan. Marines picking up. If we would have picked up earlier, we would have gone for a sail. It would have been nice. Just uh, on the heady alone, just unfurl and off we go. But uh, we're nearly here, over there where the mooring is. We're picking up a mooring that's um, in, on the, so I'm picking up a mooring that I'm allowed to use that is owned by the Batonga Beach House, Batonga Boat House, and they're orange, and there's three of them to the left of the wall. Watch my other video about me selling my little 16 foot outrigger canoe, double outrigger canoe. It's over to the beach directly behind me now. So I sailed from Patonga over to the beach and then back again. So, on the beach, right behind me. Patonga's a beautiful little spot. Nice creek in behind here that goes for about seven kilometers. Good paddling on the sub. All right, so the plan of attack for the mooring is to drop the revs, come in around downwind from it, but not too close because downwind is the beach, and just slowly idle up to it. Engine in neutral. I don't have a tender behind me, so nothing to pull in to get the propeller fouled. And then just slip the, the mooring over the bow. Should be pretty straightforward. Ha ha ha, fingers crossed. The mooring's about 100 metres away. Maybe eight, just the middle screen. Uh, time to drop the ribs. All right, engine's in idle. And we're just slowly coming up to it now. Turning up. About five seconds, I'll grab the bow hook. Stay up to it. Coming up to it now, heading up. All right, we're all right. We're on the mooring. There she is. And next step is to give the decks a bit of a scrub. So there we go, shut the seacock for the seawater engine cooling. That's done. Keys go away. Shut that. All right, the boat's on the mooring. And I'm getting ready just to uh, get picked up by the wife. It was just a quick trip today. So everything's secure, hatches down, washboards are in, line secure. I've got a, a line lashed around the, uh, the mooring eye so that doesn't come out. Tiller's lashed, nice and firm. Give the decks a quick wash, sheets are all stowed, everything is in order, nothing's loose on the deck. 
So that was the first little journey of uh, Reverie, the boat's name, because she's a Daydream 28. The, uh, it's, it's called Reverie, which I believe is the French word for, for Daydream, or to be in a state of, of uh, sort of thinking about being elsewhere. So it's kind of nice. But yeah, in the next video, uh, I'll give you guys a tour and inside and out and show you what needs to be done just to bring her up to a, you know, a really nice standard. So thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.